<laughs> jingle music, jingle bells, jingle something. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the last Eastgate UK live experience of 2021. Oy! And as if by magic, Eastgate James has joined us with his top 50 um, roundup of some of the Eastgate news stories of 2021, which is, is it, is, it, is it anything to do with death to 2021 at all? Uh, not necessarily, although there were a few moments in there which I might have taken out that were less than positive. <laughs> uh, there's, so, there's, so, there's only so much bad news one person can take about it. Yes, it is indeed. <laughs> well, on so, balance, on balance, do you think, do you think it's, what kind of what kind of year do you think it's been for Eastgate? I, I do think it was nice. We got a lot of revisions, uh, especially when it comes to wheels. So yes. uh, shall we get into it? Yeah, go for it. All right. So to start off with, we got the Onsra Challenger, which basically was your quintessential 80s styled skateboard, but it was electric. And mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of the shortboard market, they many people were really happy with what they did, and I'd say that was a, a good result. Because mm -hmm. uh, the nearest thing similar to that was uh, Slick Revolution's um, Urban Kick, and yeah. as we all know, uh, Slick Revolution, morning, Slick Revolution went boosted. <laughs> they did indeed, and there's yeah, there was there's also like the X Way wave and things like that there's lots of there's quite a, there is quite a few and i guess as scott's been One is Scott. testing some of the things like the tiny and things like that um there's been there's been quite a, a range of uh, short boards as well as long boards hasn't there i to look at there, were also anyway, a lot yeah. of, there was also a lot of really unconventional things so yeah PNG, they basically brought out this old bmw skateboard design and they made it electric yes. And there was a big Kickstarter campaign. People were saying, nah, won't succeed, not going to happen. Got fully funded. And yes. then uh, I, it all went quiet. Did people get their boards? What was the reviews like? I mean, there was the odd one. Um, but that uh, Team G behemoth board, it just went quiet, which is a shame. Yeah, so I think that's, I think for me, that, that reminded me that it's still really an evolving space, isn't it? This, and we still have things that nothing's nothing's for guaranteed. So things that you pre-order, things that that are on startups and kickstarters, they they might sound really good, but whether or not they deliver is still, you know, you still got to do your <laughs> do your homework. <laughs> do your homework. <laughs> do your homework. All right, uh, moving on from that, um, we had quite a few things resurfacing after people forgot about them or just didn't hear about them in general. And one of those was a documentary called Assisted Mobility by Taylor Lewis. And he talked about using an electric skateboard as a mobility device. Um, I think he was like paralyzed on one side of his body. So the idea of yes. using a skateboard remote to get around was just, um, it was a wonderful way a, a, an alternative to a mobility scooter or a wheelchair. Yeah, and I, I, I thought it was a really, a really thoughtful film, and it won awards and everything. And mm -hmm. I think that one of the quotes that stood out for me from that film was how he said that, you know, like a, I'm not ready for a wheelchair or a mobility scooter, mm -hmm. but he says a, 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 a skateboard connects you to the community. You know, you're 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 travelling through, the, and people are wanting to talk to you. You know that kind of stuff. Um, you're not seen as different and stuff, and and I think that's that's one of the really, you know, the, the unifying nature of skateboarding. Um, be great to see that getting some mainstream coverage, wouldn't it? Definitely. Um, number four, because there's fifty of these. There's a lot to get through. Um, the co-founder of Man's Shoes dies at ninety years old. Paul oh, yeah. Doran. So yes. I think if we talk about important equipment and where would we be without decent shoes? <laughs> Absolutely. Who hasn't who hasn't owned a pair of vans at some point in the uh, number five, uh, following on from ITV's documentary, and they made a documentary about e-scooters. E-scooters Britain's new road rage. Um, yeah. as expected, uh, the program was kind of biased in its approach. Um Surely not. programs have been made about cycling. So that that was aired, and I mean, uh, what can we say? 
you shouldn't expect much from these kinds of programs. Yeah, and then I guess so. I guess, and the, the thing is that what does that mean for us? I, I mean, you know, well, I suppose all public, you know, sort of, uh, sort of like small. I've never worn the Vans. Suki comes out. He's never worn. Have Vans never made a six-inch heel? No. <laughs> anyway, but right yeah, now. but yeah, yeah. No, there's yeah. So it it's such a moving. It, but the media generally is 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 afraid of new things. Mm. And uh, particularly the red tops, the the tabloids, it's all the world will end. But I think there was a bit of that when e-bikes came out. So you give it Honestly, a couple of years and they'll, they'll calm down, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, it's just worrying because there's all this kind of ag- antagonistic stuff that's being fueled and, and fought against the cycling community and against skateboards and against e-scooters. And it's it's kind of worrying where it all ends. And none of it's based in common sense either. No, it doesn't tend to be. <laughs> right, number six, electric skateboard company MaxFind celebrates its sixth year in business. Uh, good anniversary, six years of business. Yes. Uh, not many electric skateboard companies get to that. <laughs> well, you know what we should do? We should we should do a, like a list of of skateboard companies and how long they've been on the go. That that could be another. Remember, you had your idea of top trumps before. Yeah, we could, <laughs> we, could we could add that to, to to range wheel options. You know, uh, can you get spare parts? How long they've been on the go? There you go. So uh, number seven, again, with Max Find, they brought out these conversion kits, which were pretty cool, especially because one of them was an off-road AT, well, AT hub motor kit. And that's pretty cool because you don't see that very often. Swappable no. battery packs as well, which is always much appreciated if you're into retrofitting skateboard decks. And then number eight, uh, Mellow Boards, still no update. It's uh, almost 2022. No update since 2020 on their website. So was that was, was that the one that I think did Scott say they were coming out with something quite soon? <clears throat> when you well, posted, did you not post something before about, about so, how yeah. how quiet they'd been? And he said that they've got new stuff coming out. So maybe the whole supply chain stuff. Mm. Um, it's really screwing with stuff around the world, isn't it? I mean, I've I've seen lots of um, lots of folk complain about the wait times for, for new boards from China. Not you, it wasn't you, not, Scott. Not really. It must it have been. Well, I think I think you maybe you maybe quoted co- commented on another. There was maybe another brand that had been quiet for a while. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's just unfair because um, yeah, you know, yeah. there's all these new cloud wheel hub melter designs coming out. There's all these new batteries coming in and mellow boards. Um, they're kind of falling behind basically. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, again, and you think about the that endless <clears throat> sort of mode as well, you know, um, could be quite a, a vote winner as well. Hmm. Number nine, uh, electric scooter company Udita emerged with a, a swappable battery pack scooter hybrid kind of thing. <laughs> and that was cool because the, uh, the, the scooter stem turns into a tripod stand. And uh, we don't see that very often. A tripod stuff. Oh, company still, update. Mellow. Still no update. Two years. Oh. Doesn't bode well. Um, well, I mean, that... they're not stressing. They're obviously quite mellow. <laughs> True that. Uh, and then out of nowhere, number 10, Tony Hawk. He shows up in a car advert. On an electric yes. skateboard, the JK uh, discrete trucks, if you remember those. Oh, that's not good. Mm, yeah. Somebody needs to get that uh, push assist technology off of Mellow yeah. and use it. Hint. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You, you know what? The two the two people who've been commenting today are, are up at five in the bloody morning or, mm. or something like that from Australia. So respect, respect <laughs> To Scott and Craig for joining us from, from down under. Anyway, yes, back to back to your list. Number eleven, uh, Evolve releases their Hadian model, and uh, that uh, you know set the world alight. People were like, "Has the remote been changed?" And they drove over it with a car. <laughs> yeah, there was there was there was an awful lot of hype at the, at the time. A lot of excitement. A lot of a lot of stuff bandied back and forth about. 
people who absolutely loved the idea of it and said it was world changing, and other people who said, "Meh, how much?" Okay. So, and I think I think in general it has it has kind of gone somewhere in the middle because there's been an awful lot of impressive stuff come out. Number since. twelve, uh, yeah. Number twelve, going back to things that resurfaced. There's a very little known film um, called The Skateboard Kid, and it uses a motorized skateboard. And then there was a sequel the skateboard kid too and it uses an electric skateboard so um it's basically herbie with an electric skateboard and uh, not many people know about this film so that was interesting to see yeah um, oh well can you can you see a big budget version being made in 2022 i mean why not if herbie can get a reboot with lindsay lohan why not an electric skateboard oh film? there we are that's what we need um over to number 13 so this was strange. Apparently there's a trend where people are just not using lights um, in order to not get the attention of the police. So it's it's a bit worrying that that's become a trend. Mm, yes, it's a, it's a bit, uh, <laughs> it's a bit play, playing with a bit of fire, that, isn't it? Because mm. uh, you're, you're already pretty vulnerable if you're not able to be seen. Yeah. I, I actually think the police are more likely to pull you if they think, you know, you're, it's dark and you're not visible. Mm -hmm. You know, unless they're... Anyway, yeah, yeah. Number 14. Uh, this was the highlight of the year for me. Cloud Wheel Donuts were released. Oh! For older electric scoot, uh, skateboard motors. And I was... Oh, I was just so happy. <laughs> briefly? You were happy briefly until you tried to put the buggers on. Oh, oh, that too. But, um, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, it's my own fault to not double-checking. <laughs> It's a new product that happens. Does it fit? I'm not sure. Should I have asked? Yes. <laughs> uh, number 15, there was this um, old electric skateboard video from 2008, and uh, it, it made a resurface, and I think it was called Electric City or something like that. I should mention as well, the full list of these is on uh, my Facebook page, eSkate News, so if you do want to actually see those links and yeah, follow up good point. Sites, do that um <clears throat> number 16 backfire releases the uh the hammer model with uh its premium go fast spoiler and tow truck um oh yeah oh yeah and that's um that's uh scott saying he's got the 165s on the way i'll be interested to see how they how they pan out um yeah we, 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 yeah oh anyway we'll better, better we'll go through we'll go through your list and then we can come back to any any up upcoming topics okay so uh number 17 going back to the cloud wheel donuts so they were supporting loads of different companies but for some reason vestar and meepo were excluded from this list um they apparently placed an order but it didn't go through or whatever and it's mo all these months later but it still hasn't been sorted so it's a shame that uh for people who want cloud wheel donuts the bigger ones mm -hmm. meepo not apply Oh yes, so it, it can be, it can be just something as simple as that. You know, it's a, a, something not getting in on time, and then a whole bunch of people miss out. Yeah. Number eighteen, YouTuber John Paul YT. Are electric skateboards good investments? He did this wonderful video that basically said, if you think this is going to hold its value and you try and sell it on, that ain't happening. And there's all these people trying to sell their uh, premium electric skateboards and it not going anywhere. So buyer beware. Yeah, no, the, the, buy, buy them because they're fun, not not because they're an investment. Unless, of course, you've got one of these rare original boards and in a, another 20 years, if you manage to keep the electrics going, maybe it will be worth something there. X-Way, they went and released their new x one sorry uh x yeah x1 max model and mm -hmm. that was a, a good revision from their original slimline design they don't have triangular bushings they have traditional ones so that was nice um moving on from that number 20 um people are still asking for electric skateboard remotes with horns built into them and we are still waiting <laughs> So I think Michael Michael Terry mis misheard that, and he he put horns on his. It's an easy mistake to make, yeah. <laughs> um, then number twenty one, there was a petition that took off in Australia to legalise 
electric personal mobility devices, and this got over 6,500 signatures. So any petition that gets that much support um, deserves, you know, a round of applause. Um, I don't know how it went afterwards, but hopefully things will change for the better in the long term. Yeah, well, it's yeah. I just I just heard the other the other day that that uh, I think New South Wales has has you know has outlawed um, electric you know scooters and, and skateboards, which is a really major back backward step. Mm. And it's a, it's a real worry that we're not we're not seeing things progressing in a linear way. We're seeing some things moving forward and some things moving back, and there's just no rhyme or reason. Despite climate change, despite traffic jams, despite all of this, people are still making really odd decisions based on maybe preconceptions and one or two accidents hitting the papers or that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's see which one we got. There we are. Okay. So I'm guessing that's the uh, just how it's going in Australia, the petitions. Um, and then electric skateboard company Walgo celebrates their fourth anniversary in business, which is, you know, another, yes, did it, still going. Ah, Always been out there, but now there's a bigger focus. All right, okay, right. Moving on from that, 23, <laughs> Meepo releases its new V4 shuffle model, which, uh, we, you know, Meepo have been quiet for a while, and people have been wondering what they were up to, so now they've, uh, they've come back in with things like the shuffle and the hurricane, which is nice. Um, number twenty-four update on the campaign. Sorry, um, losing myself. There's so many things here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there was this thing called campaign to challenge the police crackdown on e-scooters, a legal defence fund. So loads of oh, people yeah. got their money together, something like eleven thousand um, pounds, to kind of challenge these uh these confiscations despite people you know doing the best they can to ride safe mm. it's, it's it's an interesting one because a lot of people won't chance you know taking things to court because it can obviously get quite ugly if you don't just take the fine i i know somebody up here who who has arthritis in his knees and used it for a social care job and he he went to try and challenge it and yeah. got thrown at him he got Got an, you know, a really disproportionate amount of money, as well as losing his scooter and stuff, and and it's just it's just really sad. They're, they just don't, don't seem to care. Yeah, yeah, but it, but I think this is the first time there's ever been a, a properly funded legal case uh, to yeah. tackle this kind of stuff. So that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Moving on from that, number twenty-five. We're halfway through now. Halfway. <laughs> Uh, Meepo introduced their Lingyi-based FOC, uh, which is really interesting because they claim that it's just as good as Hobbywing, but it retains the push-to-start feature, which many people prefer. So you don't have to, you know, bend down, press the button, because that's disgusting. <laughs> that was definitely one of the phrases of the year, wasn't it? It was, it was. Uh, moving on to 26, in the shadow of boosted boards, how boosted went bust. Really interesting article about the convoluted history of what ifs from Kanye West to Lime to even Yamaha motorcycles trying to get ownership of the brand boosted. So that's definitely worth a read. It's really long article, but um, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's that's the thing. Things the technology changes so quickly, doesn't it? And I guess that's mm. part of the thing with boosted as well, isn't it? Yes, no, it's just really insightful because yeah. um, of what, what could have been. Could you imagine mm. that? A motorcycle company owning electric skateboard companies, the things they could do with those motors. The thing is, the thing is they could still, they could still, they could still, you know, without that name, they could still have Yamaha electric, you know, or yeah. I, I actually wonder about hot because Honda's, Honda's always been, yeah, to blame. You know, I mean, they're bonkers with their some of their self balancing stuff and all this kind of self balancing yeah. motorbikes and stuff. You know, they've been they they've done some really you know adventurous prototypes. So yeah, it'd be cool to have some big investment, wouldn't it? I definitely, definitely. Number twenty seven, um, e scooter news in Scotland gets interesting. So um, basically, Nicola Sturgeon um, she did this publicity stunt on an e scooter. 
And then the local parties were like, hang on a second, all these other people are getting the book thrown at them, but you're getting away with this because you're a politician. So that was interesting because the last time that um, Boris did that, nobody blinked an eyelid, but this time they tried to hold the politicians accountable, which was good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's interesting that though, because uh, the, the, well, anyway, we won't get into old politics, or we'll think <laughs> more than the 50. Yeah, uh, number 28. So the real finally revised their, their um, mini model. So they, they put a, a different deck on it. They actually advertised it with the motors that you were going to get now on their website, which is good. So instead of it being these outdated motors, it's the new um, revised dual hub motors. Mm -hmm. uh, number 29, the Royal Air Force decided to start using e-scooters as a way of traveling around their vast private lands. So lucky. <laughs> yeah, but but again, when you when you saw the when you saw the comments on that news story, again, it was just all pretty much all hate. Um uh, when, when, you know, not not on your story, but the actual original story when it hit the papers, when when you looked through the Facebook posts on it, it was like Bloody ridiculous, bloody, blah, blah, blah. you know, it was just nonsense. I mean, it's a pr it's private ground. It's yeah. big areas. It's 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 absolutely prime for some some kind of electric, you know. Yeah. It's almost than... like we should have racing events on the Air Force grounds. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on from that, number 30, World Electric Vehicle Day is celebrated in the UK on the 9th of September. Is briefly, briefly mentioned in a parliamentary speech. Um, but as you expect, nothing about electric scooter legalisation. It was car-centric. Yes, nothing about skateboards at all either. No. no. Missed opportunity. So, so let's let, let's try and do something a bit more a bit more dramatic next year. Um, we, should, we should try and connect anyway. Let's we'll come back to some of the things after after yeah. your list. Number 31, Evolve HQ's skateboard factory in Australia faced an attempted ram raid, was uh, denied by some impressive telescopic bollards. <laughs> and then uh, 32, a new shot board from Tiny emerges, which uh, was quite a nice design, very reminiscent mm. of the boosted board enclosures. And they're making waves. Then we have number 33, uh, Meepo's new Hurricane model is released. Uh, community was a bit split on the pricing of it. Some people are saying good value, but a little cheaper would have been nice. Yeah, it's interesting though because because the when the Hurricane came out very quickly, the Black Friday sales came out and and it and it was it was a stonking deal, wasn't it? It was it was really good, and I think I don't know, but then I think the original the. I think the first few did they not get they got um sl 300 shred lights as part of the price so i think that the, the pre-launch you know it was still a bloody good deal it was always that sort of like yeah they're, they're, it was very cheap it was it was it was like that was, high. That was astounding really mm. um uh, i did think that that was that was a really good effort for such a new board brand new hitting the market and I, yeah Number 34, EV pioneer and inventor Sir Clive Sinclair dies, aged 81. So we owe a lot to this guy for the history of electric vehicles in the UK. So, you know, it's a, it's a shame he had to pass before, you know, it all kicks off and gets legalised, really. Yeah, he, he kind of, he saw the electric vehicle thing, but before the technology wasn't really there to support it. And I think mm. um, if, he'd, if he'd have been... If he'd have been doing his inventing now with the tech we had now, I think he'd be quite a yeah. Very good. You boards, I won't sell. Yeah, I mean the the hurricane's got a lot of it's yeah, it's got a lot of really good um a lot of really good feedback um in the community. It's certainly been one of the that and the, the, the Zeus are the are two two of the boards that have been probably talked about most. Um, definitely more than the than the Hadian, you know, I would say recently, you know, um, anyway. So number 35. So this seemed to be the year of, of like shortboard revisions and mm. releases. So we, we got the uh, Mini 2 model from WowGo, 
which is very 1980s retro styled. No swappable battery, despite the very similar enclosure to the X-Way Wave. Um, but it does use the smaller card wheel donuts, which a lot of people did appreciate. Number 36, um, there was this e-scooter trial in Canterbury and they had to take hundreds of electric scooters away because for some reason someone was going around chopping them all up with angle grinders, which is a bit worrying um, that somebody would commit to do that many electric scooters. I mean, that's something we hear about in America, not in the UK. Yeah, it's just, I uh, yeah, you would have thought a couple of carefully placed um, cameras could have sorted that bugger out. <laughs> yeah. Number 37, Sky Sports advertises a German football coach, Julian uh, Nagelsmann, uh, travelling to training on an electric skateboard, which yeah. uh, that was cool to see. <laughs> we don't run to should... football training anymore with skate. <laughs> We should, yeah, he probably he probably got bollocked because if he fall, fell off and knuckered his knees, it would mm. end his career. But, um, yeah, it would be good if, if we had some more celebs, probably. I mean, it's quite sad, isn't it? But, but like, if it that's what probably will bring it to more attention is if somebody relatively well known, um, rocks up on a, an electric skateboard to something and. and it's true, isn't it? Who's going to be the next Casey Neistat, the next boosted board um, mm. uh, celebrity, I guess? <laughs> uh, yeah. Moving on from that, um, over in the US, uh, number 39, Eastgate Joe appears on 9 and 10 News, and he did a really, really concise interview about the whole movement and what he does to ride safe, and that was good to see. I mean, any decent interviews on the TV is always good. Yeah. Number 39, electric scooter mobility company, Bird, introduces an electric wheelchair and mobility scooter hire scheme in the US. So this is kind of like a step up from if people aren't hiring e-scooters, will they hire mobility scooters? Because they are expensive. Yeah. And that's the red acid ones. <laughs> Number 40, YouTube channel Electroheads does this video on um, e-scooters and electric skateboards, basically talking about how they're a form of uh, transport justice and mm -hmm. that it's a shame people who use them for disability reasons are being uh, penalised. <clears throat> Number 42, um, there was Yiku, and they released this uh, empty mini shortboard very retro design, um, one of the little-known shortboards. So, I mean, shortboard year this is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number 43. Now, this was one of those unfortunate incidents where an e-scooter basically set fire on a London train station. And uh, as a result, TfL, they introduced this ban for any scooters near the train stations, which... Uncalled for when it yes, it's, it's interesting because because would they do they still let, let e bikes on? Mm. Funny that, yeah. isn't it? And it's 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 you know, bikes, it makes yes, it, it was now, you know, I mean, there's the, the technology is the same, so why you know, it's just if they banned all electric vehicles, but you know, then you would literally say, oh, well, okay, but what about power chairs? What about somebody with a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, so the technologies anyway, it just is it's not logical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, actually, what's, what's interesting is um, because a solution was taken away from people from getting to station to station, instead, people are just riding from station to station or they're putting their um, electric skateboards, electric scooters, electric uh, unicycles into bags and suitcases. So, um, you know, it's almost like some kind of smuggling operation. I will get my skateboard on that train. <laughs> So we'll maybe see we'll maybe see bags that are this is not a skateboard or something. <laughs> I um, number forty four. There was another legalisation petition over in the Netherlands, and this one got an eye watering twenty thousand eight hundred and sixty two signatures, which is huge. Um, and here's hoping that kind of gives them the push to legalise them or make you know. Yeah, because I've heard over there it's 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 particularly brutal if you if yeah. you get caught the they're 
there, there's just no tolerance at all for it. Right. Um, but then it's, I suppose, it's the, it's, it's the country of the bicycle, I think, <laughs> a little bit. So I think sometimes it's, you would think that there'd be a bit of synergy between the, yeah. the, non, the non-car users, but there we go. Number 45, electric scooter company Transite officially gains Australian-made certification. The only electric skateboard company to hold such a prestigious title. Yes, and again, <laughs> uh, well, I do think I do think that sort of thing, that sort of recognition that that a brand is part of a country's economy, really mm-hmm. contributing to the local economy, and um, that's the sort of stuff that will make business people pay attention rather than just enthusiasts, because they're going to say, "Oh, this is actually, you know, jobs and skills and all that kind of stuff and money." You know, all that kind of stuff. No, we don't talk about money. money. <laughs> the wives could be watching, <laughs> as they say. Evolve <laughs> are definitely not uh, 100% Australian made. So, yeah, they, they haven't Yeah, they haven't reached the, the standard clearly for the... But maybe one time they will. Maybe, maybe. They've, they've uh, set the benchmark, got some catching up to do, competition. <laughs> Uh, Moving on from that, uh, 46 was shared and sustainable transport given a fair share at COP26. And and this was um, Matthew Penchars of Voir Scooters. And it's true, COP26, there was something like 46 representatives from the electric car companies, but no mentions to electric scooters or electric bikes or cycling. And it was just, it was abysmal. Um, maybe next year things will be different. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, moving on from that, 47 Flip Sky released a revision to their VX2 remote, fully waterproof, wireless charging, and an external antenna. And, yes, uh, the VX3 it's, bl- it's bloody expensive, though. I've looked at it. <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> I'd want it to be bulletproof as well. Definitely. I mean, they, they need to show it can be driven over by a car too. Um, that yeah, seems to be well, but I mean, the, I mean, the thing is about that VX3 is is it's actually being used for the for those e foils, you know those. Um, so it's proper, proper. It's not just splash proof. It's proper dunk it in, dunk it in the sea water. <laughs> so I can see, I can see where how, and I suppose that's partly why it's wireless. I mean, it's a nice bit of kit, but again. Hopefully they trickle down and you get cheaper ones hitting the market. Definitely. Uh, number 48, Max Find announces their first belt-driven model, the FF belt with revised ergonomic remote design, 28 miles per hour top speed and swappable 8.7 amp hour battery packs. And that is a big swappable battery. And what did the FF stand for? Um, uh, good point. Whoa, ho, ho. You never knew this was a quiz, did you? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I I, I just thought an FF, it sounds like an odd one. Google it for next time. Fully functioning belt. Fully (laughs) functioning. Number 49. I wonder announced their upcoming Cloud Wheel Rovers, a 165 millimeter all terrain wheel appears to be a hybrid design between rubber tread patterns and foam core and mm-hmm. there's rumors rumors that there could be a donut version on the way Ooh. well scott we'll, we'll look forward to hearing your opinions on it i mean i guess they, it'll be inter- it's always interesting they, they look quite slim so they're now hopefully they're lightweight that's one of the key things because the the other donuts have been uh, the other cloud wheels been a bit heavier, than that. <laughs> a bit slippy when we, yeah. But, but well, I'm, to be honest, I haven't I haven't done that much mileage on mine because it's on it's on my board that's not that's not working. So, but I, I quite liked me cloud wheels. All right, actually, I didn't didn't have any problems with them when I had them on. But um, but yeah, but, if they're if they're nice and lightweight. But again, it would be interesting to see even if they're not the donut ones, if you could replace the. The actual tire part separately because it does seem a bit wasteful to replace the whole wheel. You know, mm-hmm. when we're talking about the, um, you know, the whole um, sustainability of electric vehicles. If we can bin less stuff, then that's good. 
Uh, but That's I don't know. Point. Is there a recycling point for used cloud wheels? Mm, well, there we go. Although I, I remember seeing right in the, see right the, in the early days when it was they were just coming out. I think somebody used it like a layer to, to like turn it down so it was flat. So I had a, and I thought, just ride the bloody thing; it'll get like that. You know, you just need to ride it. And they said, oh, the contact patch is brilliant now, and it's like, well. Right, and to end it off, uh, number 50. So remember I said this was the year of the short board designs. So yes. um, very quietly, Vestar boards, they revised the hub motors on their Mini 2 model. So instead of it being this really obscure one with um, three hubcap bolts, they changed them to the ones that can fit the 105 cloud wheel donuts. So that's good. Um, but yeah, it just... It made a lot more sense. I'm I'm torn because I really wanted to try these obscure hub motors, but now there's the smaller cloud wheels. But I but you know cloud wheels they slip it when wet. So I'm a bit like, eh, is it worth it? <laughs> yes. So so overall, any any particular things that you that you picked up from this year that you think were either trends because. I was just sharing just before the uh, before we went on here. There's a, a guy's posted just a list of e skates that came out this year. Uh, Bo Young Stevenson. Um, cheers for putting that list together. I think another pe a few people have added to the list. We're not going to go through the list, but it's it's a it's a fearsome list of boards, <laughs> you know, um, from from big manufacturers, from small manufacturers. You know what I mean? It's been a it's been a real uh, and like you say, there's been some 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 mini, some very short board, but um, there's been some AT sort of two in one. I would say probably is the the, the biggest, the biggest um, uh, ones that have gained the most headlines. I guess you know um, ones that have been, um, there is yeah. one thing that I do wish I would have included, but in hindsight it makes a lot of sense. Um, so propel, um, propel boards. They you know redesigned the way that we do off road boards. So that was really inspiring to see, and you might have one. <laughs> I might have one in 2022 eventually. Yes, it all it's actually apparently, apparently, drum roll. Um, it's it's hit the UK. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. So I've just I've just got Brexit to deal with now. So I'll see you next see you next year and we'll see. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I guess that that sort of um and have an independent suspension on a and not a pure off-road board mm. was kind of a first. Um, and then there's there's lots of other big name uh, brands and uh, just a real mix of stuff. But there's, uh, one of the things that I was noticing was particularly like the AT2 and one sort of boards that, that, that a lot of them reach in range that was really, you know, premium priced boards before that you know you know you like your meepos uh your hurricanes and your um your zeus on board on boards you know um uh really hitting quite decent mileage particularly the zeus um and that's 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 got, always got to be good at, at, at a decent price point <laughs> for me if i was to say the, the trends that i noticed um well for one there was definitely um it was definitely a year of the short board designs. Mm -hmm. You had mm -hmm. ones that were very reminiscent of boosted designs, the enclosures, the mm -hmm. capacities they were putting on them, the features. Um, I think the, there was the X-Way wave as well, which was yes. a, setting a benchmark. Um, but yeah, so there was that. There was the ingenuity of the community yeah. deciding that, hey, you, you won't let us bring our electric skateboard on a train. We will hide it. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, the, I just think that it was a good year for revisions and considering the circumstances of how quiet it was the previous year, I'd mm. say it was much needed. All right. Um, and, and yeah, that's that's interesting. And um, Definitely the yeah. wheels, though. The wheels um, for the, the older hub motors was a, was a big... Oh, that was your... Moment. Yes, absolutely. And once you worked out how to get them, get them actually on and sorted, it was... Aye, yes. No, honestly, the joy. it's fair to say that um, because of the new cloud wheel donuts that fit the older hub motors, I do think it has changed the um, the hub motor industry for the better. 
because mm -hmm. before that you really were stuck with street wheels. But yes. as a result, you're going to need a bigger battery. <laughs> you are, and maybe some risers to avoid wheel bite as well. <laughs> <laughs> they come in the box. <laughs> they come in the box. That's true. Oh, that's good. Um, so Scott's just said that shred lights have dropped have dropped their poll. So I don't know if you did. You see the shred lights poll, which was about you know like um, they they had a poll of twenty twenty one, and it was like. Um, which did you think was the best skateboard in, I can't remember, it was, it was either three or four price categories mm -hmm. and you could either choose from their drop down list yeah. or you could you could add another option onto it. Uh, and there was like, what was your best, you know, most safety fear, uh, safety gear, you know, what do you think? And, you know, name up, you know, your favourite YouTube um, mm -hmm. reviewer and stuff like that. It was, it was, you know, I thought it was actually quite an interesting list. And that's um, Scott saying it's dropped overnight now. I'm not sure whether it means it's dropped as and it's been released or it's been dropped as it's been binned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I would um, say, though, um, going to what you were saying about shred lights, the, uh, yeah. the new 1000 Lumen ones, I'm trying to remember, yeah. did they come out this year or the previous year? Because I, think... I only started this um, weekly journal thing. A recent yeah, no, I think I think it, I think it was er, early this year that the SL three the three hundreds and the yeah purpose made fireproof bag. Yes, that's yes. that's number one from our list. Um, yes. we call it fire resistant now because people get very defensive. <laughs> it's released. Yeah, no, that's that's really good. Um, and it, I think I think it's it's a significant thing for um for people's confidence about having big battery electric things in your house. Um, it's quite a quite a good idea. Um, be interesting to see see if it catches on, if people um, are prepared to spend that kind of money on safety. Or... It's a small price to pay, uh, even if it just gets you an extra 30 seconds or a minute or so-and-so. You know, it's that well, little bit I of mean... time to unlock the door and throw the skateboard. Well, I mean, compared to compared to yeah, compared to a, a fire in your house that that's bloody hard to put out, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and that's and you're only looking at you're looking at well about the about, about the same money a lot of people are spending on a helmet, you know, not a skateboard helmet, but like if you're if you're having like a like a, a mid range motorbike helmet or something something like that, then you could easily be spending that kind of cash. And hopefully it should last you a few years. Definitely. Good to see good to see all that kind of stuff happening. Um, something, and I, th I think that was genuinely a bit left field. It was like, oh, that's cool. SL thousand, yeah, that was that was that was this year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, there was so going back to the um, the fire resistant bag from Nobleman. Um, yes. I'm just trying to find the thing I wrote about it because there is a, um, ah, I must have missed it. Anyhow, so basically there's like a pre-order price for it, which I think is something like. It's about 130. Is it about 130 quid? I'm just finding it. Give me a moment. I think it's about 130 for the UK and then about 170 or something when it's when it goes to full price, if I ah, remember right. rightly. Found it. Right. So um, the, it ends the pre-order sale on the 15th of january yeah pre-order price translates to about 134 pounds then afterwards it rises to 186 pounds for this fire resistant bag and uh, like you said that's um one third the price of a budget board yeah no it's 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 a good idea it's a good idea definitely um it'd be interesting if f like so if um, you wonder whether home insurance companies could could sponsor, you know, could say, you know, if you've got electric devices, you know, we'll lower your premium if you've got some of these things. You know, a bit like they say, if you've got a fire alarm or if you've got like, yeah, 180 ish for yeah for the for the full whack. So it's worth getting in there for a a pre order if you if you like what you see. Um, the only thing that I would say, and I said this to James just before we went live is the metal zip on the nobleman bag it looked in the video in their promotional video it looked like they were having a bit of a struggle like it was a bit tight maybe it's just because it was new maybe it needs um 
a bit of lubrication or whatever. But um, that would be my only worry from what I've seen of it would be, you know, if you're using it daily, if it's that if it's that much of a, you know, if it's not a smooth gliding zip, you know, is that a bit that's going to fail on it? But so again, it might be a pre-production one. I who knows. Looking forward to 2022, though. Uh, yes, is a bonus. Oh, <laughs> well. Um... I think it's fair to say that this item is going to be uh, reviewed by everyone and um, rightly so, you know, you have to give it the scrutiny it deserves if they call it fire proof when it's in reality fire resistant, just how fire resistant can you really make it um, being realistic because lots of people will say that get yourself an army surplus box that's lead lined and I don't know the prices of those but I don't think they're on your quid. <laughs> no, that's true. And and I think the whole the whole idea of it's a preventative thing. So the, despite the fact that like an electric um a battery fire can easily hit two thousand degrees, you know, yep. but the whole idea is and it's not rated to that, but the idea is that it snuffs out the hmm. the oxygen so that hopefully it it just starts smouldering. Yeah, um, but there's also um, a lot of discussion about them making one of these bags for things like uh, electric unicycles and electric scooters. I mean, it'd be nice if there was a little pocket version for your swappable um, e-bike batteries as well. Yes, well, I have seen I have seen um, people with EUCs that have got they've got like massive metal. It's almost like the fireproof safes that they that they put them in to charge. They tested six zips. All right, cool. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I genuinely think Noble, Nobleman deserve a, a real pat in the back for, mm. you know, for for you know, just going out into into something else that nobody else is thinking about. Um, I, it's it'd be, I really hope it it takes off. And I do think people have been talking about this kind of product for years. So the fact it's came out now, it's to be honest, about time. <laughs> yes. And so uh, hopefully people can start putting some kind of um, electric horn add-on for their remotes and not the spiky ones that Mr. Terry would talk about. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got I got I got given an electric horn that you can put on up. Um just just like one that you could put on up on your bars on a on a bicycle. I got gifted one and I wondered whether I could just have it around my thumb or something like that so I could press it um, I haven't, even if, haven't tried even if, that even if all they got was one of those small little electric uh, cube horns that are about about this big give or take right? Yeah. and even if they just got a little bit of um, adhesive and stuck it on the remote <laughs> so you could just press the button that would solve the problem well, what, what about what about right? We've got we've got guys watching who are all three D printed up to the max. Luca, Luca, if you're watching, <laughs> right? Anybody or anybody else, right? If if you could get something that was a really a really compact push button horn that wasn't not one that you needed to have access to, if you could get a a three D print your sleeve for your remote, but with a little pocket bit that stuck out. That would hold it securely so that it's not going to fall off halfway down the road. Hmm. And now you can maybe put it in from the inside before you put on the um, uh, slide the remote inside so it would be properly secure. Yeah. But you could still just have a little gap to press it. There we go. Another invention for 2021. And the thing is, it's such a small invention that it's astounding it hasn't been followed hmm. before. I mean, there's the, the guy that was talking about a quick release handle that doubles as a quick release for lights uh, mounting. That's another thing that we might see more of in the year. Um, but I'm really hoping that we see more um, revisions in terms of batteries. So, you know, we're testing all these different batteries now. Where's the graphene ones? Where's these? Yes, yeah, these instant, instant recharging light as a feather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lasts for lasts for donkeys. Yes, I'm waiting for wireless charging. Me, you know, oh, like under point. the yeah, roads. That, that's that. Then, then, then all the range worries is, is sorted because we just we just get on and we just ride and, and it just keeps powering up as we go. That'd be brilliant. Definitely, we we need some magnetic um, charging plugs. So none of this uh, 
trying to pull their cord out of your enclosure. Yeah, that would be good. Oh, well, here's hoping to uh, uh, an exciting 2022. <laughs> I, I don't even have anything to toast to toast with tonight. <laughs> that's, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm drink, drink. that's the 2021. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hats off. And here's hoping we actually get to do some group rides, some some catching up with people, a bit more social stuff because it's 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 getting a bit old now, isn't it? Honestly, it's it's going to be a really interesting year for me, I think, because just down the path from me, um, they're building a BMX pump track and yes. it should be done by March. And it's literally on my doorstep. Oh and it's done. So and is and is it is it going to be uh, dirt or is it going to be tarmac? Yeah. And apparently the people tarmac, that are going yeah. to build it are the same people that built the BMX track for the Olympics. So oh. getting that in a place like Leeds is going to be amazing. an Olympic an Olympic track. Well, here's hoping they they, they um, play nice with you and don't uh, get <laughs> get out tea with you lapping them yeah. on on their BMXs. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the, it's the great thing about, um, you know, a neighbourhood like this is that during uh, school times, the kids will be at school. So, yeah, uh, and you can grass them up if they turn up. You can grass them up. Just yeah, say, this yeah. this, this lot, get them to school. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All right, James, it's been great catching up with you. Have a great mm -hmm. new year when it comes, and uh, we'll catch you again for some more Eastgate news and catch-ups next year. I, and like I say, go to the um, East Skate News oh, yeah. Facebook page and it's got all the links for all, all the links. things I mentioned. Absolutely. So Suki's put it all in the chat and um, yeah, check it out. And if you've got stories that you want James to cover, you know, you know, make comments on his posts and, you know, bring stuff to his attention because you're, you're fearsomely checking out the news, <laughs> checking out everything, but you can't be everywhere. So there's always, there's always yeah. something new to to add to the chat so brilliant it's a good way Here's of remembering again. just a weekly catch up yeah thanks again bye bye